Hi, I'm Lundy, and I'm going to be talking about how to start and run Peak Living Network local groups and networks. First thing is we don't license people to have groups. So if you are following the Peak Living Network principles, then your group is a PLN group. It's totally up to you. You, you, you self-define whether you're part of the network. We're not going to complain unless you're really not following the principles that you're agreeing to follow. To, to make your group part of the Peak Living Network. So, you'd like to start a group, or you'd like to get a network going in your area. And when I talk about a local network, I mean something that might be multiple groups, and people doing co-counseling with each other, and people holding other kinds of gatherings from time to time for everyone who's in your local network. In other words, everyone in your geographical area who's committed to living by Peak Living Network principles and using them with each other. So, first thing, you want to start a local network, you start by starting one support group. That's, that's the starting place, generally, for creating a local network. The other way to go about it is by, is by finding people to co-counsel with and starting to have a network of different people who are doing co-counseling with each other. If I remember to, I'll come back at the, at the end of this video and, and talk about that. But the common way that you're going to get a group going in your area is by starting a single support group. So first thing you have to decide is what kind of group do I want to run? In other words, what's, who's in the group and what's the group about? And that's totally up to you as the person starting the group. You might have what's just a general support group, which means it has no particular topic. It's for anyone who's, who's seeking support. Both men and women are welcome there. And that's what you want to do. But you might want to do something different from that. You might want to start a group that's just for women, or you might want to start a group that's just for people of color. Or you might have a, like a topic you want, like this is going to be a group for school teachers, or this is going to be a group about leadership, or this is going to be a group about activism. Like you, you, you decide both the constituency and the, and the theme of your group, or decide that it's not going to have either of those open group for everybody. Then, do you want to do your group online, or do you want it to meet in person? And we're hoping to move more and more towards towards having people do in person groups around the world, but that's that's your decision. And and it, in some ways, it's easier to get a group going online, at least at this point, but you also lose certain things that, that, that are present when people are meeting in person. It's not the same. So there are trade-offs. A PLN at, at the moment when I'm making this video is, is mostly all of our stuff takes place online, but we're also, it's also coming up a lot in our conversations, how hungry we are for a lot more in-person events, and we're working towards making more of those kinds of things happen, both both locally and on, and on the bigger scale. So, next, how are you going to how are you going to recruit your membership, the people that you want, uh, your own friends, uh, people you've met through other support groups you've been part of, anybody else that you respect and admire. You can give them information about the Peak Living Network. You can get them to watch the video called "What Is the Peak Living Network." You can hand them pieces of literature that you can get from our website at peaklivingnetwork.org to, to get them interested in the Peak Living Network. And anyone that you think highly of, I, I would discourage you from going after people because you think they really need the help. That's not, that, that's compassionate of you to have that outlook, but that's not generally what's going to lead to the most successful group, particularly when you're building a new group or a new network, you don't want to overload yourself with responsibilities or situations that are particularly hard to deal with. So particularly at the beginning, this is, this is a time to, to really think about who, who do I want? Who, who do I want to be around? What's, think, think about yourself. Think what's going to be good for me? Because the first thing about making a support group work is it's got to work for the leader. It's got to work for the person creating it. So think what's going to work for me. That's not selfish. That may sound selfish, but that's actually practical. That's what makes a group survive, get through those difficult early stages, is when it's really working for the person who's creating it and, and doing, doing that, that initial labor of getting the group to happen. Do you want to meet weekly? Do you want to meet every two weeks? Do you want to meet once a month? Those are all decisions that you get to make. If you have one or two people in your area that you're already connected to who are already interested in the Peak Living Network, that's even better because then it's not all up to you. You can think together with these people, make these decisions that I'm listing off all together 
and that will be a more, more enjoyable process and it's a process that you're more likely to follow through on, on getting it done. But you can do it on your own. Uh, we also, with the Peak Living Network, if you tell us you're starting your group and tell us what it is, we, we will help publicize it. We will, we will spread news of it through the network, we'll put it in our newsletters, and that will particularly help you if, you if you're running a group online. It may not be a huge help if you're running a group in person because there may not be anybody else that close to you who gets our newsletter or who's on our Slack space, but we will help in any way that we can with spreading the word that, that you're starting a group. Uh, there are difficult issues in the whole question of if you want to make the group domestic abuse related. Again, completely up to you. If you want this to be a group for, for people who've come off of abusive relationships, who want to heal from that, or any other theme, people who are struggling with family court, it's just that you're setting yourself up for quite a heavy atmosphere. And so consider not doing that. It's your choice. I'm behind you if you decide to do it, but consider not doing that. The, the, co collecting a whole bunch of people who are coming off of those kinds of experiences or are still mired in them creates a kind of heaviness in the group that that's, it, it, it's hard on the leader and it can be hard on everybody to have a couple people who are in those kinds of circumstances and a couple people who are not in those kinds of circumstances is likely to make your group actually work better and, and help give you the buoyancy to create a group that, that people are going to want to come back to because people aren't going to want to come keep coming back to a group that where everyone's just down, down, down into this heavy stuff and there's nothing balancing it. Of course, we're going to go down into heavy stuff. That's part of why we want to have a support group, but we want it to be balanced with some upness, with some, with some joy, with some things that we're feeling hopeful about in life. And you're more likely to get that when you have a more varied collection of people and a more varied collection of issues in your group. And the crisis work, I really encourage you not to take on. Uh, I know we live in a period when people are really unhappy in many ways with domestic violence services and feeling like they're not in many pla in many places they're not doing the, the kind of job that that we wish they were doing. But I would discourage you from taking that on. That's a big social service issue that has to be solved on a bigger on a bigger scale. Uh, well, I, I'm not telling you not to take it on. Actually, I take that back. But but consider not doing it and move, move carefully and move with a lot of support if you are going to take that on. And, and, and you can make it be under the Peak Living Network or not, as you choose. There are a couple places where people are doing domestic violence work and kind of blending it with Peak Living Network. But it's tricky, and it's not the same thing. So ha we're happy to have conversations with you about that, in, in the, the difficult, the, the, com the complexity of those decisions if you're going to go in that direction. Next challenge that people have is where do we meet? For, for an in-person group. And there aren't easy solutions to that. S uh, sometimes there are businesses that where you can ha where they're kind of back rooms or there are tables that are that are more private. Sometimes you go down to the mall and go into like the one of the eating places and, and cafeish kind of places or whatever and you can find some place where there's reasonable privacy to talk. It's 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 dicey, you may get interrupted, people coming up to your table and stuff or your area. So where else can you meet? Well, you can meet in, in your own home if you're comfortable bringing to it, people to it. But I recommend that you meet people first somewhere else. Don't bring them to your home when you haven't met them yet. And it, so you're screening a little bit who, who's coming into your home. But a private home, that can work. Sometimes you have access to somebody's office because they have an office that you can use at off hours. Sometimes there will be centers near where you live where some space is donated. Libraries typically have spaces that you can reserve, although you can't necessarily reserve them week after week at the same time. Libraries aren't usually going to be able to let you do that, but you can at least use, have some of your meetings in a library space. It can be a way to help you get off the ground. So it takes a little research. It takes a little research to find out what possible spaces there are in your town, who's willing to donate space. Uh, schools like preschools, for example, and private elementary schools are worth approaching because their places often aren't being used for anything in the evening. And if you make some agreement with them to, to give them a little money for the use of the place or at the very least that you're going to leave the place in very good shape and maybe contribute a little labor to the care of the place. The preschools have a really nice feel to them. Elementary schools have a really nice feel to them. They're just kind of cheerful environments. And that's a place to also think about, to, to approach them about whether you can work out using that space in some way or other. So 
Now, so you're running a group. So what does a Peak Living Network support group look like? It's very simple structure. We've, we've structured this precisely to make it as easy as possible for people to do. You, you just watch the time and try to start on time or close to on time with whoever's there. You say, welcome. You ask for people to do a quick round, a minute per person or less. We don't usually time these, but we're asking people to respect quick, a minute or so a person. Everybody goes around and says something that's gone well lately. And some people are going to struggle with this. Some people are going to say, nothing good is happening. I don't think that's true. I think that, that become, that's a habit that some people get into from being very deeply discouraged. They get in a habit of just not considering the possibility, not, not, not even being able to really take in that anything good has happened. So you might need to push a little bit. You sure? You can't think of, a, of five minutes when you were in a good mood. You can't think of one nice conversation you had with someone. You can't think of one nice interaction you had in a store. Uh, you can't think of something that you enjoyed reading or something you enjoyed watching on video. It's, it's generally there. So you can't, someone can't come up with something, they can't come up with something. But, but don't let it go easily. Try, try to be after people a little bit and encourage them to feel that actually part of being in a Peak Living Network group is that you, you need to put some work in every week to coming in with something good to say. In fact, I, I would start to push somebody a little hard if every week they're saying, I can't think of anything good from the past week, I would start pushing them a little hard. But is this really the right group for you? Because that's part of what we do in this group is we come in every week with something positive to say about the past week. Uh, then there are a number of options for the next thing that happens in your group. You don't have to do any of them. You can... You can uh, discuss, read and discuss one or one, two or three of the Peak Living Network principles. There's 23 Peak Living Network principles at the moment until we revise them. You can read any of those aloud and ask people to react to them. What do they feel about that? What do they think it means? What are its implications for their own lives? So that's a way that you can have a little discussion time at the beginning of the meeting. Or you might want to just read a couple paragraphs aloud about something that's related to emotional healing. So if you want some, some content, that's a couple ways you can have some content for a discussion that, that's just an open discussion for the first, say, 10 minutes of your meeting. That's completely optional. In, the, in our current Peak Living Network groups, we have a little discussion like that at the beginning of the group sometimes, and sometimes we don't. It's up to the leader and, and up to the members. Then the bulk of the support group is simply what we call splitting time. You just figure out how much time do you have, how many people do you have? And you divide the time evenly and you time it with a timer that has an audible beeper so that everybody can hear loud and clear when the person has two minutes left and then everybody can hear loud and clear again when their time is up. So we want a beeper that's loud enough to be heard in the whole room. Some of you may already know this about me. I encourage you to get a kitchen timer and not to use your phone. Your phone is full of sources of anxiety. Everybody's phone is full of sources of anxiety and distraction. I really encourage people not to even have their phone next to them in a support group. The phone should be in a different part of the room and turned off, or at least in, in some dormant state where you will not hear your notifications, where you won't even know that a notification is coming in. Those are things that are very, very distracting. Buy a kitchen timer. They're whatever, you know, five bucks. They still exist. Count, you know, digital timers that will count down nice and accurately that will have a nice loud beep for you. When you're calculating time, Leave about an extra 10 minutes because the, there's always a little time lost in, in transitioning from one person to the next. That doesn't happen instantaneously. People take a deep breath. Okay, whose turn is it? Okay, you get started. Maybe somebody ran a few seconds over on their turn. So there's always this kind of like slop time that happens. So let's say I've got an hour left in the group after. Say, say the group meets for an hour and a quarter, or say the group meets for an hour and a half. We spent that early time doing that round of something that's gone well lately, something as we call new and good. Uh, maybe we had a discussion time for 10 minutes, maybe we didn't. Now we're splitting the rest of the time, let's say we have an hour left, and we've got uh, six people. You say, oh, that's 10 minutes a person, except it's not going to work out that way. You go 10 minutes a person, you're going to run over your hour because of the slot time. So we want to shorten that by at least a minute. If you make it five-minute turns, then you have a little extra, you have six minutes. That'll create about six minutes breathing space. 
Okay, short, so shorten the turns enough to, 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 to allow some, you know, five or ten minutes of breathing space. And then you also want to allow another five minutes at the end of, this, of the meeting time for a quick round of what a quick thing that everybody's looking forward to. And I'm not going to repeat what I said about new and good, right? This is, this is something where people need to be able to come up with something that they're looking forward to the great majority of the time, maybe not every week, but the great majority of the time where this group's not going to work for them. Actually, let me just go ahead and say, someone who's in such deep discouragement or in such deeply bad circumstances in their lives that they week after week can't come up with a, with a new and good at the beginning or can't come up with something I'm looking forward to at the end of the meeting needs something different than what we can offer in the Peak Living Network. They're in the wrong place because they're not gonna, because they're not going to get what they need. They're going to keep hoping to get certain things from the Peak Living Network that they're not going to be able to get here. And they need they need... That, per that person really needs to be using social services. So that's all it takes to run a Peak Living Network group. That's, that's all there is to it. And because we divide up the time up evenly and, and time people's turns, there's, there's actually low pressure on the leader. We ask that people primarily be quiet, except for the person who's speaking. If people in the group, the leader or other people, want to make quick, really quick, supportive comments, that's fine. You want to say, oh, yeah, we're hearing you, or, oh, that sounds terrible, or ask a quick question. But no one, including the leader, is to talk at all at length during somebody else's turn, and no one is to talk about themselves during somebody else's turn. That time is their, their time, and it's best if, for the most part, the group and the leader just is just listening. And that, that also makes life easiest for the leader. You feel like, well, I don't have to be a counselor here. I don't have to be a therapist. You're absolutely not a therapist. We're not professionals in the Peak Living Network. But you don't even have to be a counselor. You don't have to be the voice of wisdom. You don't have to summarize people's turns at the end. In fact, I, 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 I discourage group facilitators, group leaders from making some kind of like kind of capping comment at the end of somebody's turn, like that was great or that was amazing or or, uh, wow, you're going through some heavy stuff. Like, Avoid summarizing or in encapsulating at the end of their turn. Just, no, your time is up. Thank you. Now we need to go to the next person. That's it. That's the running of a Peak Living Network group. You do that much, and people will keep coming back. If people feel like the group is listening to them really well and making supportive facial expressions and occasional brief supportive comments, People will keep coming back. So what do we offer group leaders from the Peak Living Network? The main thing we offer is support and consultation. So you need to make a phone call or send an email to get support for challenges you're having as a leader. We can be there for you about that to, to help you keep your confidence up. In other words, those kinds of supporting you emotionally and supporting you logistically, like helping you think through things like, oh, how can I find more people to join my group? Or how can I deal with such and such a situation that has arisen? Or there's somebody in my group who I'm finding really difficult and I, I need you to think with me about how I'm going to handle this person who's really difficult. We can be there for you about, about those kinds of things. We can't be there for you about your other personal struggles, but the Peak Living Network, you can, we can connect you with other people to support you about that. But as a group leader, we can support you with emotions that come up for you specifically about leading the group, and we can help you with these practicalities of group leading. Peak Living Network, also, we've got lots of literature that you can use, that you can share with your group from peaklivingnetwork.org. We've got all these videos, right, on the Peak Living Network channel that people in your group can watch. And we offer co-counseling training. And so if, if you want to be trained as a co-counselor, you can do that, and that will support your leading in a bunch of different ways. It will also get you a lot of additional emotional support, but it will help you develop a bunch of skills that will help you with your own healing and will help you be an effective leader for, for other people in your, in your group. Yeah, if there's someone you really have to ask to leave your group because they're too disruptive, they won't follow the rules, they won't stop at the end of their time, they're making inappropriate comments to other people, that's an uncomfortable situation. But you really, when it's time, you need to do it. Sometimes it just has to be done. I hate to say it, but sometimes you need to say, we can't have you here anymore. 
again, if you don't do that, you're going to lose other people from your group. People will not keep coming back if they've got someone in the group whose behavior is, is inappropriate or who's not respecting group limits and group structure. We can be here to support you also through the difficulties of telling someone that they need to move along. That's a really uncomfortable, no, no, no one likes being in the position of having to, having to do that. Uh, so once you have a support group going, then other possibilities will arise and, and where you might decide to start another group or somebody else might come forward who's willing to start another group in your area. People might start doing co-counseling with each other. Uh, some people might decide to take a co-counseling training, but they can start doing co-counseling with each other without even, having, ha without even having had a training. You can learn from the manual at peaklivingnetwork.org. You can learn from the videos on, on, the, on the Peak Living Network, Peak Living Network YouTube channel. Uh, there, there are a bunch of ways to dive into this practice. Of course, we encourage you to take a class when you get a chance to take a class, but that's wonderful for network building is when people start splitting time outside of the group. And that just builds people's connections. It builds people's closeness. It builds their effectiveness in knowing what kind of comments help and what kind of comments don't help. Because that, that varies from person to person. Some comments that you might find helpful, I might find not at all helpful, and vice versa. So we really have to get to know each other and learn what helps. So, uh, again, we're here to help with other aspects of building your your network locally of people who are who are involved in emotional healing in in the following people living network principles and just to just also to remind you of things i say in various other places when i say following you know pursuing emotional healing in a way in keeping with people living network principles that doesn't control what healing modality you're using a lot of people in the people living network choose to do co-counseling but a lot of people are using other healing modalities or both, co-counseling and other healing modalities, whether it's, whether it's nature, whether it's spirituality, yoga and meditation, whether it's various kinds of psychotherapy or, or some of the more body-centered body healing therapies that are out there now. Whatever path you're on, the, that's fine. The people living there doesn't say you have to do it a certain way. We're just saying you need to do it in keeping with our principles. So... You can do it. You can start a local support group, and we can help you with a whole leader's packet. If you want to pack it, right into the right into the peak, main Peak Living Network address, Peak Living Network at Juno, J-U-N-O dot com, and we'll send you a whole packet for leaders that'll give you handouts, that'll give you guidance to you, that'll give you some reminders about things that you need to work on in developing your own leadership skills, and you can start a group.